Greetings and salutations, everyone. I hope everyone is doing well still, and welcome to today's bonus upload. And it is just jam-packed full of very terrifying experiences, experiences that are so horrifying for the people that it actually causes sleep paralysis years later. Before we get into it, though, a couple links. As you all know, I rely on Patreon, PayPal, channel membership, and the merch to help the channel to continue to grow and go. Links to Patreon, PayPal, and channel membership is in the description below. Merch displayed directly under the video. Also, Dogman Frightening Encounters, Volume 1 through 3, the audiobook versions. They were written and researched by Tom Lyons, narrated and produced by me, Jeff Nadolny. Those audiobooks are available on Audible, Amazon, and iTunes, links to which are also in the description as well. And finally, last but definitely not least, if you'd really like to help support the channel to continue to grow and go, simply subscribe. It doesn't cost a cent. Click that like button. Takes half a second. If you don't want to miss out on any of the informative uploads I put out daily, click that bell icon. And folks, please leave a comment. Why? Well, because these things really do help the channel to continue to grow and go, and yes, folks, they do matter. Now, everyone, I have taken far too much of your time. Let's jump into today's bonus, shall we? Today's first encounter. My wife and I are both very sensitive to energies that most people around us are not. We've each had our share of far-out paranormal encounters separately, and since we've been together, it's been one hell of a ride that just seems to get more far out as time goes on. Backstory, while we were building our house, we were living in a large tent on the property. It was a pretty large tent, almost 400 square feet, so you could easily walk around in it. It had our full-sized bed on the bed frame in there, a kitchen area, and a table with several chairs. It even had a canvas drop cloth as a floor, so we were not walking around in the dirt. And I had the sides folded in and weighed down all the way around us, as well as staked down to keep the critters out. Apart from a couple of flies and one or two spiders, it did the trick. At the time, I was doing freelance handyman repair work during the day and building our house in the evenings. And on the day of this incident, I was finishing up work on the house, that had bad juju written all over it. I could feel the negative energy from the curb the first time I had pulled up to the house to meet the owner, and walking through the door the feeling intensified. But it wasn't absolutely overwhelming, and what can I say? We really needed the money. I had lost part of the thumb a week earlier in an accident working on a house. I had an upcoming surgery to get it stitched up, and to get the bone properly covered, and we did not have insurance, money was more than tight. Besides, I felt comfortable in my abilities to keep the negative energy at bay while I did whatever work had to be done and got out of there. Anyways, I'm getting off topic after a couple of weeks of working there. By the way, no one was living there at the time. The regular things that you would expect to happen in a high-energy place happened. Lights flipping back on right after you would turn them off, doors slamming shut behind me while I'm walking down the hallway, or opening for me as I'm reaching for them. The kind of stuff that's pretty much just meant to get a rise out of you. And the more I played it cool, the more intense it got. Eventually, I get to the last day when over the phone the owner hinted at stiffing me from the bill. And as I was packing my gear, I guess it was evident that I wasn't planning on coming back because the activity in the house was extremely low. Virtually non-existent except for the same dense negative energy that was always there. But now, more than ever, I felt like I was being watched. Not just watched, but stared at like something was focusing on me with everything it had. Everything up until this point had been weird, but it was only your everyday kind of weird. The kind of weird that people who don't want to accept it can still somehow find logical excuses for. They'll say it was a draft, faulty wiring, really big mice in the walls. The next thing that happened was the first thing in the house that genuinely spooked me. As I'm walking through the living room to the front door to leave for good, 
tool bucket in hand, I passed the only hallway in the house on my right. As I looked down the hallway to double check that I had turned off all of the lights, I saw something I didn't want to believe. At the end of the hallway, about 20 to 30 feet away from me, sat a huge black dog. Its head was following me as I walked past the hallway. When I say huge, I mean massive, like my head would have fit inside of its mouth. Prior experience with manifestations like that has taught me to give it as little energy as possible, and that you're better off acting like you hadn't noticed it, so I continued walking calmly toward the front door, even though every hair on my body was standing on end and my adrenaline was racing. I stopped at the front door inside of the house, turned around and addressed the house and everything with it, stating that as I left this house, nothing was welcome to follow me. I drove home and that was that. I didn't tell my wife because I didn't want to worry her. We had enough going on at the time without bringing up things that I felt I had already addressed. So fast forward to later that night, my wife and I are fast asleep in bed. I'm torn out of sleep by my wife's terrified gasp, and being in a canvas tent in the middle of nowhere, I was already on edge. In the first split second of being awake, I see my wife sitting upright in our bed, still in the process of gasping while our dog, who had been sleeping next to her, ran barking and snarling like a lunatic and jumped off the base of the bed between us and the door. I still hadn't seen what had terrified them, but leapt off of the bed while shouting at our dog, Bad! good dog. He's a little guy, and his job was to let us know about the boogeyman, not to fight it himself, and landed between the dog and the entrance to our tent. The entrance, which was not only still zipped up and buckled up tight, but staked to the ground in multiple places as well, as I did every night. As my feet hit the ground, I stood almost face to face with a massive black dog. It was sitting in front of the doorway, and as I landed and looked into its eyes, I was filled with nothing short of absolute rage. I loved my wife with all of my heart, and here was something dangerous that was not welcome in our home watching us sleep. Immediately, I stepped forward and shouted at it deep and loud, Get out! As I did so, this thing stood up and stepped towards me. And I shouted again, this time clapping my hands together as hard and as loud as I could. While it stepped forward again, again this unbelievably massive dog, which is also face to face with me, height wise, steps forward. At this point, maybe four feet away from each other. It has not run off and it is clear that this thing could easily kill us both if I let it. I lunge forward and come down as hard as I can with my right fist aiming to kill it, aiming between the snout and right below its eyes. And just like that, ready to get torn into ribbons, I go right through it, and it's gone. I'm completely shocked and spin around to see if somehow it slipped past me to my wife and dog. Then unzip the very bottom of the front of our home, rip the stakes from the earth, and run a few steps out into the night, looking every direction for this thing. The moon is out, and I've got excellent night vision. But I can't see any sign of it. Nothing's moving, no footsteps in the dark, I can't smell it, nothing. So after a minute I ran back inside to make sure my wife is okay. She's still sitting straight up in bed, eyes wide open, but she's okay and the dog is tense as hell. I finally felt my thumb screaming in pain and pouring blood at this point. The bone was still exposed waiting for surgery and the heavy bandage had gotten knocked at some point. My heart rate was calming down and I asked her what she saw while I was trying to stop the bleeding again with paper towel. Now we are both extremely logical people despite all of the weird things we have seen. No matter how much paranormal stuff that you have seen, you can't fall down the rabbit hole. And it's still safe to assume that the vast majority of the weird theming you have experienced can be explained logically. That's the way we both view it. When I asked her what she saw before telling her what I saw, she looked me dead in my eyes and said it looked like a werewolf was sitting in our doorway watching us. I don't believe in werewolves, but I know for a fact that we both individually identified an unbelievably massive canine in our home, ten feet from the foot of our bed, 
and we both saw it vanish into thin air. I know our dog saw something that he identified as a threat. There were no tracks anywhere around our tent the next morning. I looked as soon as the sun had come up. Even if there had been tracks, we live in the middle of nowhere in the desert. There are no wolves. There are occasionally stray dogs and coyotes, but everything is on the small side. The description that has constantly come to my mind since then has been Hellhound. Tonight's second experience. I've been debating on sharing this, but I'm starting to get really freaked out and figured it couldn't hurt. I'm going to warn you that English is not my first language. I'm French-Canadian, but I moved to the United States about three years ago. So if my grammar is off, I'm sorry. So I live in a pretty rural area in Michigan, close to the lake, and I am currently living alone. Both my parents are currently in Canada, taking care of my great-uncle, who is in his late 80s. They have gone for a month or so, and probably won't be back until late December. I'm 19, so more than old enough to be alone. But some really odd things have been happening in the last few weeks. So it started back in September, when my 15-year-old cat, Ginger Snap, went missing. At first, I figured she had passed away, since she was very old and had health problems already. And a few days later, I found her body completely torn to shreds on my back porch. I mean, she was severely mutilated to the point where I threw up while sobbing hysterically. I came to the conclusion that it must have been a bird of prey, since we have big owl and hawks where I live. A few days pass, and on October 4th, something odd also happened. I was watching television at around 11 p.m. I kept hearing a really fast knocking sound. It would come in sets of five and then stop for a second, then restart. I ended up going outside to investigate, and I couldn't see anyone, but there was a really horrible smell. Then what happened that night? So I had woken up at like 3 in the morning, which happens sometimes if I had a really messed up dream. So I walked down the hallway to get a drink and probably watch some TV. I got to the fridge, which is right next to the back porch door, and I heard someone walking around. I froze, coming and staying completely still, looking over at the door, and I saw a huge shadow. It was kind of crouched on its hands. I don't really think it saw me, but it did look human. It didn't move for like whole three minutes before the shadow moved in the blink of an eye and was just gone. I ran back to my room and I called the police. When the police finally got there. They couldn't find anything, but they told me that they don't believe it was a person since our back porch is suspended about 15 feet into the air and there was no ladder or steps leading up there. I am super freaked out, especially since I am the only one here. His third encounter. Two summers ago, I went to a cabin on one of the Great Lakes with my young kids and wife. We were meeting a bunch of family, ended up being close to 30 people, and the cabin was more like a mansion. For whatever reason, we had left late, something I was fine with because the kids would sleep, and I'm the kind of person that can stay awake and go to sleep when I want. So after driving a good five hours, I leave this city on the lake that's big enough to have a Target and Walmart. I still had more than an hour to go, and I was surprised to quickly find myself driving on a dirt road. It was a nice dirt road, well maintained, large enough for two-way traffic. Nonetheless, I slow down to about 45 miles an hour. We're in the middle of the forest. I know the lake is somewhere on my passenger side. Pretty soon, I start to see a light fog, which quickly gets pretty dense. It's about one in the morning and everyone's asleep. The road's fairly straight. It did have gradual hills, so I would drive in the fog for a while when I was low and then come out of the fog when I was high. They were very gradual, though. I'm coming out of the fog as the fog starts to thin out and my headlights are at a gradual angle up. I see something standing on the side of the road, oncoming traffic side. It was a good distance away, maybe a hundred yards, far enough that it was just a silhouette, but also in my headlights. I recognized it on a subconscious level. I had seen the shape of the silhouette more times than I can count in my life. It's a dog man. It's standing upright. What stood out immediately was its ears and its hind dog legs. 
I'm not a strong visual thinker. I'm much more verbal and emotional, yet I really remember the rest of the night more as images than I'm able to remember what I thought or felt. It looked crazy tall and skinny, but also was standing very still. I've just come out of the fog, so I'm driving pretty slow. As I'm getting closer to it, it starts to look like its shoulders might be moving up and down, and like its head was gradually turning with the car. The closer I get, I can see that it's covered in fur and looks real, but it still hasn't moved. I'm still approaching, and I can start making out facial features better. I had already seen the pointed ears from way back. I got a better sense of its muzzle, which protruded way out and was open, so I could see a bunch of teeth. I really couldn't make out its eyes. I can't remember what I was feeling or thinking. I remember it like I was driving very slow as I passed. I feel like its head moved as I passed, but I also feel like it was facing me. I could see its eyes now. I was probably 15 feet from it. Now I'm 6 foot. I drove an SUV, but it was looking down at me. It looked furious, and I swear I could feel it growling. I do remember thinking it looked wrong, kind of like it looked fake or like it couldn't be real. I've never seen the Underworld movies, but it looked like one of those. At least the body did. I saw this British movie years ago. I think it was called Dog Soldiers. It looked so much like those. It was huge like those and oddly proportioned. Like it wouldn't actually be functional. It was definitely top-heavy. Aside from standing on its hind legs, it did not seem any way human. Its front legs appeared to be like claws that were super flexible. I don't remember it having an opposable thumb, not do I remember seeing anything that would indicate its sex, though I was very focused on its face. After I passed it, something clicked and I dipped. I didn't really look in the rearview mirror and I was back into the fog soon. I still had to drive for close to an hour. I just remember sitting super straight, ten and two staring at the road in front of me like I was in a trance. I was definitely spooked that night, almost yelled at my wife when she tried to say we should empty the car that night. I remember being super relieved that we got the worst room because it had no windows. I didn't say a thing to my wife that night. The next morning, I left early with my dad to get a rental boat. I wasn't going to tell him. Long story short, Stuff kept happening that prevented me from telling anyone, and the longer it got, I think the weirder I thought it would be to say anything. I was definitely on the edge any time we were outside, but it also was a nice enough house with no beach, and my kids were young enough that they stayed in a lot. I never really tried to really think about it, and I think I just kind of got to the point where if I did think about it, I'd push it out of my head quickly. A couple of weeks ago, I'm deep into YouTube and I find this channel. It had a picture of the thing that I had seen. I listened to the upload and I was in absolute shock listening to this guy describe exactly what I saw. It was like opening a door. I did more research. I'd obviously never heard of a dog man, but for the first time ever, I'm finding myself scared. I didn't change my laundry one night because the lights in the basement were off. I nearly crapped myself walking out to the car at night and hearing what sounded like a stick break. I don't remember any dreams, but I have woken up several nights soaked in sweat and terrified. I think before I knew other people had seen this thing, I could just block it out. Now I can't. Today's fourth encounter. From when I was little, I started to see what seemed like a white creature with yellow eyes. I could see this thing when I was at my grandmother's house in the city when it was night, and I was taking a walk or even in my corridor at home for a few seconds out of the corner of my eye. This thing was tall. It was always smiling. It appeared even in my sleep paralysis, nightmares, lucid dreams, and even what I called peaceful dreams. When I was little, I was staying at my grandmother's house every summer, and at the age of four and five, I started seeing things. But not something wow, just little shapes glowing, and then they randomly disappeared, and I could hear voices like they were in a place with echo. 
I didn't give them too much attention, but then it appeared, and it freaked me out. It was night. I know it was past midnight, and I was in my grandmother's living room watching TV with her. I didn't have a TV in my room. There were three houses in the same yard, all ours. The fridge was in another house, so I went to grab the ice cream, but I froze just before I entered the house because I heard something breathe. My dogs were not there. They were with my other grandmother, my mom's mom. I started crying instantly, and I looked to the right side to see what it was, and this thing was just staring at me, with what looked like a smile showing its teeth in those yellow eyes. It was much taller than I was. It didn't harm me. After a few seconds, it just started to walk into the backyard, and I couldn't see it anymore because of it was dark. I forgot about the ice cream and ran back to the house. I told my parents, but they didn't believe me. I told my grandmother that night, too, and she just stared at me in shock and then told me to go to sleep. After that encounter, I started seeing it, but in real life, not so many times as I saw it in my dreams. If someone can tell me what this thing is, or if anyone else has encountered it, please, anything would help. Then I hear growls. Where my grandmother lives, there are rumors of ghosts, a witch, and something like a big black dog. I mention nobody will go out of their homes after midnight because of these rumors. At the age of 13, I was at my grandmother's house with my cousin playing, Don't Get Angry, Brother, and he had a brilliant idea to go out into the empty street just because he was ready to show me the rumors were fake. Like a stupid kid I was, I went with him, and we took a walk. We were on the street for a while, but we were all so tired, so we decided to go back. And he was just laughing at me because I was scared of those obviously fake rumors that were meant to keep us inside and be good kids. On our way back, we saw a dog. My cousin thought it was a wolf, but I started shaking because I sensed something bad, and I was thinking... Wolves go in packs, right? That's what my teacher had told us. So why is this one alone? We froze when it turned at us. It was so big, its eyes were black. We stood there for a few minutes, but it seemed like hours. It was just staring at us, and we were staring back. I was ready to run if it moved towards us, and then it just vanished. It didn't walk in another direction. It didn't run. It just vanished while we stared at it and it stared at us, but not like it was getting invisible, just darker, like it faded, and we couldn't see it anymore. We got back to my grandmother's, and we told my grandmother. Then she told us a story about my grandfather. He had encountered the dog as well, but he was in his car, and the dog just appeared out of nowhere and started running after him. But my grandmother told us that he said the dog was running awkwardly, like a human, but yeah, it was on four legs. When my grandfather was near the house, the dog just vanished. My problem here is, after I saw it, it started. I started hearing random growls when there was no dogs near me, even in my house or at my boyfriend's house. I hear them two or three times a year, and if my boyfriend's around, he hears them as well. These growls sound like a pack of large dogs that are growling at the same time, but they sound so intense. Today's Fifth Encounter When I was 22, I worked for a small security company of 18 people at the time. We worked at an area tourist location called Seven Falls in southwest Colorado Spring, in the Cheyenne Mountain Canyon area. I remember the shifts being grueling, due mostly to the fact that we were always standing in direct sunlight during the afternoon and evening. The average shift we were expected to walk a minimum of seven miles between the base of the parking area to the top of the falls. And we were rarely allowed to use the guest elevator for the handicapped and elderly. The whole park was on a hilly incline, so walking the top down was okay. Bottom up is what exhausted us. In the evening, near the base of the falls, native Ute or Cheyenne tribal dancers would perform and we had to monitor the crowds, which were slight breaks for about 15 to 20 minutes. These falls were frequented by area tribes for hundreds of years, 
and were still considered spiritual. So it was the native tribes that pushed for their performances, since Seven Falls is considered a state park. At the end of the night, we would sit at the main entrance into the falls at the bottom of the canyon, off of Lower Gold Camp Road, to monitor the toll booth until roughly one in the morning, except on weekends and holidays. Then we were out there until three in the morning. On several occasions, while waiting for the end of my shift, I always had occurrences that made me feel like I was going to be attacked by either an animal or a person. Guttural hissing, deep mannish groans, and harassing growls could always be heard from behind the giant gate. Glowing eyes, either red or white in color, but larger than the area wildlife, could be seen behind brush and tree canopies. But what stuck with me is the shimmering humanoid shape. The shimmering was otherworldly. The way I always described it to my family and a few friends was that of like the predator. My first work firearm was an older Smith & Wesson semi-automatic single-stack pistol. That was my father's when he worked for the Foundation or Fountain Police Department. But this was the first time I felt I was defenseless while working. I watched this shimmering silhouette crawl on the asphalt over to the toll booth to what then appeared to be it standing upright and extended a long waving arm this looked like a being phased between the physical and incorporeal realm as i shifted my weight to look closer as i was awestruck the glowing reddish eye slowly came back into focus then in a snap i heard what sounded like an animal climbing up the side of the toll booth gutter, and watched as the shimmer jumped to a tree no less than twenty feet away. From here the shimmer jumped again. This time a broken branch fell from the tree. A loud crashing sound rang from the top center of the gate as the shimmer looked back one last time before going over the gate and disappearing into the Seven Falls Park, bringing us to May of 2022. My old co-worker and I ran into each other ran into each other while at Walmart. We decided to go to Gunther Tooley's diner next door. While having a burger and reminiscing about the good old days, he brings up, Did you ever see the Predator in his active camouflage at Seven Falls? My blood ran cold and I dropped a shade to just about pale. He then proceeded to tell me about his experiences on the shift that I had never heard. After leaving the diner and arriving home, I sat in my driveway for a moment, contemplating what inhabits Lower Gold Camp Road. And tonight's final encounter. Hello everyone, I'd like to share some recent events, well, in the last two years, that has happened to me, my girlfriend, and our friends. I may sound crazy, but these events have happened. We live in the backwoods in Texas. 35 to 40 minutes to the biggest town, and yeah, we live down a back road. What I know it could be a dogman or Bigfoot. It all started two, two and a half years ago before I met my girlfriend and before our land was cleared out. In August of 2018, I went out to the garage about 50 feet from the front and back door, and I'm tooling around, and I can hear my dad on the opposite end of the property on a tractor. I'm in the middle of the garage, and I heard something brush against the back wall of the garage. In watching horror films, I'm not going out there. A few weeks go by, same thing happens when my dad was at work. The same day I was leaving for work, and a clump of trees behind the garage began to shake forcefully. In February or March of 2019, my girlfriend decided to look out the back patio door. She started saying, no, 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 fouling with shutting and closing the blinds, and ran to the guest bedroom, closet, and hid. She began to cry. I followed her to the bedroom to calm her down. Whatever she saw scared her so bad. Thirty minutes later, we opened the patio blinds and nothing was there. She said there was a large, hairy thing crouched over. Its back was not facing her. About May or June of 2019, right before we clear-cut our land, and my girlfriend found an airsoft gun under my bed. 
it was maybe seven or eight at night. So let's go shoot puddles in our circular driveway. We're shooting for about 20 minutes and ran out of ammo. I went inside and got buckets of plastic pellets. I was gone maybe two to three minutes. When I came back out, my girlfriend told me that she yelled for me because she heard a whistle in the woods. I told her I didn't hear her and we should go inside. A month later, at night, she's walking out to her car. She gets to her car and hears a whistle in the woods again. A month or two later, we clear-cut our land. The experience has stopped. Then about October, a couple of our friends, let's call them Brad and Izzy for privacy, Brad's part Native American. I'll begin with this. There's a railroad that travels between the main towns we go to. A few months ago, Izzy saw something one night along these tracks. Brad saw it before Izzy did, a mile further down the tracks. Three weeks ago, my girlfriend, Brad and Izzy, and I had to stop by my cousin's house. They live off the main highway on a two-lane road across from these tracks. I just had to drop off Christmas gifts, so I get out, open the trunk hatch. Brad tells me to hurry, so I hurry up there and hurry back to the car. Brad tells me to drive now, so we go. My girlfriend and Brad saw two glowing white eyes from across the street. So they had three experiences with whatever this was on the railroad. My girlfriend and I are leaving for work at around 10 a.m. My girlfriend saw, said she had seen something across the road in the woods. Then out of nowhere we hear the train horn a few yards behind us. We live down a dirt road. If someone had a train horn, we would have heard it by now. I heard that these things can copy voices and or sounds. That same night, when we delivered gifts, my girlfriend saw a black figure on a back road behind a grocery store. The next day, she saw the figure leaving work, and the following day, she saw it along the tree line at dusk. Last night, my dad and I were taking the trash out. We had a spotlight. He was shining it around, saying something halfway to the house. I told him to stop. I saw two eyes, about eight feet high. They were white, really lightish blue, like LED lights on a car. I asked for the flashlight and shined it in that direction. I'd seen the eyes and nothing was there. I had almost forgotten about this. The first time Brad was at the house, he came up to me while I was grilling. It was maybe 7 p.m., so it was just getting dark. He asked me if I had a weird feeling like someone or something was watching me which, before he came over, I had the feeling for two to three months. And you know, tonight's bonus encounter. I live in the house of an animal shelter as the on-site vet. I do most of the dog's medical needs. We're a non-profit organization, and the majority of our money comes from adoptions. We're also located in the middle of the desert with about 20 acres, give or take a couple acres. Anyway, I'd worked here for a while, and so many strange occurrences have happened during my nighttime walkthroughs. Living on site means I room and board here, and typically you get rats, squirrels, small vermin who will poop and agitate the animals. Last night, I was walking around with my flashlight and one of the dogs who was very calm and chill. His name is Gizmo. He sort of protects me, as I had raccoon attack last week and had to get a couple of shots and some stitching. He comes with me for protection, as he's a guard dog of sorts, Bull Terrier. I was counting our dogs and double-checking everyone had gotten their meds, and the cages were locked. I get to the back where the trucks can pull in and out and go to the open lot, and I see what I assume was a large dog. I think it's one of our big dogs that had gotten out of his pen, so I approach, but Gizmo starts growling and whimpering and pulling back. I flash my light, and the dog was hunched over still. I pull Gizmo, but he won't budge. I walk over to the kennel where I thought this dog had escaped from, but the fuzzball was still in his pen. I flash the flashlight in the direction of this dog thing, thinking it's a stray, and see it standing on its hind legs. I didn't think anything of it, but it's a big dog, and it'll tear Gizmo to pieces. So I release him from my waist collar, and he takes off to the gate and sits there and whimpers and barks. 
I turn back to look at this dog thing and keep shining my light and and get my phone out and have 911 on speed dial. That thing stood tall on its hind legs and honestly, I was probably stupid to get it closer. I get closer, but it started running away on its hind legs and it just sent chills down my spine. Gizmo came back to me and started pulling me away. As I closed and locked the fence, I felt like it was out there again. And so I walked back quickly to my room and let Gizmo sleep with me. My boss told me that it was my mind playing tricks, but I didn't tell him or her. Gizmo saw it and felt the presence as well. All right, folks, a lot of just absolutely terrifying experiences. You can't deny that. Uh, that one with the dirt road is just, you know, probably one of my biggest fears after researching the Dr. Nancy Shaw case and having Dan from the ambulance uh, experience on is to get ambushed by one of these apex predators or a multiple of them and uh, be stuck in my car not having really any kind of protection except my vehicle and possibly ending up dogman food. Uh, I, I pray that never happens to anybody because I can just imagine the immense amount of fear someone would have. It is absolutely terrifying. And with that being said, I'd like to thank you all for supporting the channel. Uh, your support is what continues for this channel to grow and go, and honestly what makes the channel a safe and special place for people to want to share with zero judgment and plenty of respect. Guys, stay safe, happy, healthy, and ever vigilant, keeping an eye on our children, our pets, our family, and friends. These creatures are real. They're out there. They're dangerous. Share this information with the people you love and care about, and it may just help save their lives someday. Until next time, never stop asking questions, never stop searching for the truth, and God bless.